Howdy, y'all. Welcome back. Thank you for being here. Recently, I shared with you a brief discussion on the extensive history of the Rock of Gibraltar. To supplement that narrative, and to bring another quote-unquote naturally occurring formation to the forefront, we will today focus on Lion Rock in the central province of Sri Lanka. Also known as Sigiriya or Singhagiri, Lion Rock is considered to be a rock fortress. However, even that portion of this narrative is up for debate. Essentially, what we have is an over 500 foot tall, 590 feet according to this narrative, livable and habitable rock structure that contains interwoven chambers of functionality and sustainability. In ancient times, one could live their entire life on Lion Rock, never once having to leave the rock for fresh water or food. The rock was also nearly impenetrable. The Lion Rock Fortress was accessed through the main entrance, the Lion's Mouth, although other secretive entrances are also known to have existed in ancient times. The entire rock, according to countless ancient scholars, was shaped, carved in the form of a massive lion, hence the name. Now, usually, I'd be one to lend a bit of questioning to the narrative here. However, after abundantly browsing the sources, both ancient and modern, we find nearly all of them agree and make mention of the massive lion's head which once adorned the entrance of Lion Rock. Adding credibility to this claim is the fact that the ancient paws or arms of the Lion of Lion Rock survived the last thousand years and are still visible today. I need not explain just how intricate this design would be, even down to the massive paws, which appear much more like a manufactured addition to the rock than one that was cut directly and formed. And yet, if this narrative is to be believed, these paws were formed by hand and chisel over 1,000 years ago and were accompanied by a massive lion's head, which adorned the top entrance of the rock above the great paws. Besides that instrumental fact, we also have many more interesting facts given in the currently accepted narrative. Facts which, I believe, if shared properly worldwide, would have given Lion Rock much more infamy than it has today. Have you ever heard of this massive feat of ingenuity before? I've tried to, in this video, connect the dots as much as I could, providing you with not only the oldest known photographs of Lion Rock which I could locate, but diving into ancient and modern sources, I've tried to separate the wheat from the chaff to provide you with a brief but detailed overview of the narrative. I'll try to point out the absolute bonkers aspects of this rock formation, truly what became a rock city, one that at its peak, you could live your entire life on without ever having to step foot off of Lion Rock. So let's begin. Now, as far as the currently accepted history goes, meaning not myth or legend, although we'll dive into myth and legend then as well, we're told that the area immediately surrounding Lion Rock has been occupied since the Mesolithic period, or for nearly 5,000 years. Evidence for this is supported by the Aligala rock shelters found directly east of the rock. We're told Buddhist monasteries were created at the base of the rock by the 3rd century BC, where elaborate use of the naturally occurring boulders and tunnel systems were established. Within these tunnels, many of which have only recently been excavated, were found numerous ancient inscriptions indicating the age of the Lion Rock and the length of its occupation, as well as a brief overview of its ancient history. As we look into the more modern history, using the word modern here very loosely because we're still talking over 1500 years ago, but coming to the time of, quote, recorded history with names and dates given. We have the King of Sri Lanka ruling from 455 to 473 AD, King Datusena. Under his rule, the Kingdom of Sri Lanka was united after 26 years of infighting. King Datusena, according to currently accepted narratives, had multiple children, including a legitimate son, Magulena, and another son to a non-royal consort. This son was named Kashiapa. Kashiapa, along with the king's legitimate nephew, Megara, who led the king's army, staged a revolt against King Datusena, leading to King Datusena's capture and his legitimate son, Magulena, fleeing the island of Sri Lanka for southern India. Kashiapa then took over the throne of Sri Lanka, even going as far as burying his father, King Datusena, in the walls of the Great Lion Rock alive. From here, the legend continues that Magulena used his knowledge gained from his advanced kingdom of Sri Lanka to forge an army in India to take revenge for his father's death. 
Kashyapa, the usurper, feared this, and thus he moved the Sri Lankan capital from Anuradhapura, which it had been for many years, to a secluded, remote capital in the heart of the Sri Lankan jungle. Here, on an ancient Buddhist monastery, Kashyapa built his capital. Here, on top of, inside, and surrounding Lion Rock, Kashyapa is said to have constructed one of the most remote and intricately designed fortresses of his time. In roughly 495, Magolena, with his newly formed Indian army, returned to Sri Lanka, finally reaching Lion Rock. Kashyapa, according to some sources, was overtaken by Magulena, but indeed, other sources claim Kashyapa actually attempted to use an ancient strategy in battle, which we have seen associated with the later Golden Horde. He attempted to feign a retreat. However, his army, apparently unfamiliar with this tactic, assumed Kashyapa was fleeing from battle and abandoned him. According to this legend, Kashyapa, proud and unwilling to be taken prisoner, mounted on his battle elephant, pulls out his sword and ends his own life, still in the shadow of his masterpiece, the Lion Rock. After this time, Magolena then returns the Sri Lankan capital to Anuradhapura, and the massive complex of Lion Rock is said to have been returned to being a Buddhist monastery, one of the most important in that country. Here, according to the narrative, it remained a Buddhist monastery until roughly the 13th century, when all of a sudden, the history of Lion Rock just stops. We have no written records of when the monastery, or Lion Rock in itself, was abandoned or absorbed by the next kingdom. The next line of history in this narrative doesn't arise until the 17th century, nearly 400 years later, when Lion Rock is mentioned as a small trading outpost for the kingdom of Kandy. Again, after this, the history apparently goes dormant. In the early 1800s, roughly 1831, British Major Jonathan Forbes is said to have spotted the massive Lion Rock, covered entirely at that time by tree, bush, mud, and forest on his way to his British camp. This brought renewed interest to the site. However, the same narrative goes on to say that it was roughly 60 years or until the 1890s that true archaeological excavations were undertaken on Lion Rock. Then again, after nearly another 100 years, in 1982, the site was finally added to the Cultural Triangle Project, a Sri Lankan preservation and restoration project. Nowadays, the site can be visited and is by over a million tourists per year. However, the deepest reaches of Lion Rock are still a mystery to even the most educated of scholars. If the photographs so far didn't do this unexplainable site justice, here are just a few examples of the advancements that were found within, on top of, or directly surrounding Lion Rock. Lion Rock is considered to be one of the earliest and finest examples of urban planning and development on all of Earth. The plan combined concepts of symmetry and asymmetry to intentionally interlock the man-made geometrical and natural forms of the surroundings. Meaning, again, like many other ancient structures, we have bricks and stones, man-made construction, literally blended together with the naturally occurring rock. A more ancient, and some would say finer example, than the castles that I've already talked about, like Tech, we see Lion Rock, and we can seldom find the distinction between what was natural rock and what was rock or brick that was brought to the structure and form. On the west side of Lion Rock lies a park for the royals, laid out in a symmetrical plan. The park contains water-retaining structures, including sophisticated surface and subsurface hydraulic systems, many of which are still operational today. In 1907, researcher John Hill wrote, The whole face of the hill appears to have been a gigantic picture gallery, the largest picture in the world perhaps in reference to the hundreds, if not thousands, of hand-drawn frescoes which once populated the face of Lion Rock. It is estimated that nearly 90% of these frescoes depicted female entities, some would say goddesses, some would say the king's consorts, alluding to, in some people's opinions, the real purpose of the Lion Rock, which could have been a pleasure palace for the king. The paint here is unique, 
both for the colors used, but also for the use of shading, of outlines, and shadows to depict a more realistic view of the subjects. This is a style of artistic depiction which is seldom seen in other parts of the world at this time, but can be found in numerous locations around Sri Lanka. Many have questioned the nature of these frescoes, and one could argue these frescoes may actually have ties to an all-female group of people. Some would call them maybe Amazonians, others may claim these to be the nymphs of later sagas. But it is written that the island of Sri Lanka and its distinct but remote location to the world made it replete with many tales and legends of mythical creatures and godlike beings who helped shape the society there. A subsequent key aspect to understanding this history may come to us from something else that is contained within Lion Rock, that is the Great Mirror Wall. Considered by many to be the first culturally accepted form of graffiti, a sort of blank was here, where blank you would put your name, a sort of rendering of one's experiences or those who actually reached Lion Rock. This wall is said to have been built from red brick and masonry attached to this mountainside and then the outside was lined with what was once highly polished white plaster. This wall was said to be so finely made and so reflective that the king would actually walk by it daily to admire his own reflection. From the 8th century onward, through roughly the end of the time of Lion Rock being a Buddhist monastery, travelers would pilgrimage to the Great Lion Rock where the plaster of the mirror wall had already begun to darken through exposure to the elements. Here, the weary travelers would often leave inscriptions on the formerly white wall, poems describing their ascent to Lion Rock. Over 1,500 unique inscriptions have been found to date, and of those, at least 695 of them have been deciphered. These poems and quatrains are some of the best evidence we have that a wide range of visitors from all parts of the world made their way to Lion Rock in ancient times. The most interesting and in my opinion most important aspect of Lion Rock however is the architecture which allows somehow for the use of both fresh water to nearly all parts of the rock and to symmetrical designs that incorporate the top, middle, inside, and outer portions of the rock. Again, this is said to be a naturally occurring solid rock formation basically in the middle of a jungle, but science tells us that, for all intents and purposes, nearly every aspect of the rock has been developed, entrenched, dug, bored, and attached, and yet the rock itself, which seems completely out of place in the jungle, occurred here naturally millions of years ago. The rock's apex, or the top, is fully built out, and this top of the rock was once home to a literal community, one that never had to leave Lion Rock to survive. Lion Rock is nearly 600 feet tall. Caves are carved into the rock at all levels, where no path to the cave was ever found. Only because of later construction, like modern day steps, are most parts of the cave system accessible. Before those steps, only those with knowledge of the Lion Rock and its interior would be able to ascend to its highest reaches. Intricate interior pathways, large enough to march armies through, yet concealed to the public, litter the inside of Lion Rock. Red brick masonry, the type found hundreds of years earlier and thousands of years later, sit upon this rock like the true inheritors. We're told the rock once sported a massive lion's head, reminiscent to the tribes of Judah. The Kingdom of Candy, as depicted on ancient maps, looks like the inside of an avocado being the inner candy to the outer shell of the Sri Lankan coastline. At nearly the dead center of this candy, at the sweet spot, is Lion Rock. Lion Rock had, and still has, working water conduits and water aquifers, which over 1,000 years later still provide clean water to the greater parts of the rock construction. Lion Rock has countless living quarters, literal neighborhoods, dedicated to specific populations who once resided here. Lion Rock is so large that the artificially carved water reservoirs actually have man-made limestone islands that are built on top of them. The entire rock, depending on what angle you view it from, can often be seen as symmetrical, and the utmost importance was put on sacred geometry and its construction. 
The underground conduit water aquifers and the system dates to at least the year 500 or earlier and supplies water to, for lack of a better term, the entire jungle that surrounds the rock. And yet, you'll notice, also surrounding the rock in the immediate vicinity, in any direction, is more elaborately built architecture that is all relatively symmetrical, all seemingly dug into the earth, and all interconnected with the greater and inner portions of Lion Rock. The conduit system, the aquifer system, they reach the gardens and parts of the fortress, meaning the conduit system somehow both works below ground level and also works within the rock, sending the water uphill and allowing fresh water to be present on top of the rock fortress of Lion Rock at all times. Again, this was built over 1500 years ago. What sort of technology could make this possible? Battle elephants were known as well to live on top of the rock. Can you imagine domesticating an elephant and then transporting it to the top of Lion Rock over 500 feet in the air? That alone is a spectacle that needs some explanation and yet we have none. This highly sophisticated fortress or pleasure palace depending on how you look at it or possibly a gift from the gods seems to predate man's desire to fully explain how these miraculous structures were actually created. More or less the narrative alludes that this massive fortification was built in roughly a 20 year time period. Yes, it was known as a Buddhist monastery, but we're told the usurper king transformed the rock from simple caves to an interconnected ancient city that we see today. He did this all while remaining vigilant that the true heir to the throne would return, which he did, and take back his throne, which he did, all while halting any further construction on Lion Rock. Meaning, according to this narrative, we're to believe that Lion Rock, all of this, was built between 473 and 495 AD.